Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's well good to be able to uh, uh, preach again right now. It's uh, uh, this month because of so many insights from the Word of God that tells us about prayer. In insights for myself as I study about prayer. Insights for Pastor Montaos as he studies about prayer and preaches about it. So it's truly wonderful that uh, we can pray and express to the Lord things from deep down our hearts and uh, request Him and ask from Him and experience the wonderful uh, answers to prayer. So I have entitled my message this afternoon, When Fathers Pray. And uh, I would like to read to you, with you, uh, several verses here. Shall we all stand? Please open to uh, Job chapter 1, verses 1 to 5. We will read responsibly. And then uh, verses 18 and 19. So Job chapter 1. So Job is before Psalms. And uh, uh, verses 1 to 5 and 18 and 19. We'll read responsibly. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and uh, shunned evil. Also, his possession were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household so that is this man was the greatest of all the people of the East. So it was when the day is of feasting run their course that Job would send and sanctify them and he would rise early in the morning and often offer burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have uh, sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And thus Job did regularly. Verse 18, please read. And uh, suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they are dead and I alone have escaped to tell you. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for these uh, amazing verses. Though they are, they seem uh, uh, a great calamity, but they have an important teaching about prayer for us. So speak to us, to your servant, and to the mind and power of the Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. It's uh, amazing to continue to study about prayer and uh, as I said, uh, 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 we should, like our theme for the month, praying with fervent zeal. So the last two weeks, have you been praying with zeal? That is truly fervent, very enthusiastic, and very warm before the Lord, because prayer is very important. And as we think about that, uh, let us also remember, just two weeks ago, two Sundays ago, was uh, Pentecost Sunday. And Pentecost Sunday was a celebration of the church praying in Acts chapter 2. 
And uh, while they were praying, the power of the Spirit came upon them. And there was a great uh, a mighty wind from the Spirit of God that uh, fell upon them, and they were filled by the Spirit. And since that time until now, all people of God in the Church of Jesus Christ have uh, the privilege of being filled with the Spirit as they develop the relationship of being right with God. So I hope uh, this uh, uh, month has challenged us to really pray with fervent zeal uh, before the Lord. So because of these thoughts about uh, uh, fathers, uh, this this uh, week and next week it will be Father's Father's Day. So I will bring to you a, an important message. I have entitled this: When Fathers Pray. So what happens when you, as a father, I as a father, will pray for our children, our family, and our people? What will happen? So there are two things I would like to bring up to you. Prayer of Job. So we now focus on the man Job. And uh, so this uh, man uh, lived many years ago. He was uh, uh, in the world uh, some uh, more than 2,000 years ago, 2,800 years ago. And uh, during the time of uh, sometime also during the time of Abraham. And he lived in the land of Uz. I think uh, if I ask you if you know where the land of Uz is in the world map, you will have a hard time looking for it. But uh, the land of Uz is somewhere here near the Persian Gulf. So you remember, if you remember the, the, the map of Israel. So in the Israel is the in front is Mediterranean Sea, and in the middle of Israel is the Dead Sea and uh, the Jordan River. So you go down the Sinai Peninsula, and then uh, uh, beyond that is uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. And there, besides Saudi Arabia and Iran and Iraq area, is the Persian Gulf. That, uh, goes towards, towards the, uh, the Indian Ocean. And uh, somewhere there in that area, uh, among these countries that uh, are, are there, is uh, this land of Bush. So who knows, someday you can be a, a tourist or work there in the Middle East. Maybe you work there near the Persian Gulf and uh, for sure you will find the land of Bus, the land of, uh, of uh, the man called Job. So it's a very real uh, place, uh, in, uh, but rarely seen in the world map. You only see it in the ancient map, the land of Bus. And uh, the, the man named Lot, uh, Job, uh, lived there. So here in the story, we were starting to read in chapter 1, uh, Job and his seven children and uh, seven sons and uh, three daughters were born to him. And since they were children of uh, a millionaire, Job during that time, he was not only a millionaire, he was billionaire in our standard today billionaire na siya karon. So like uh, in the Philippines, the Ayalas. The Ayalas in the Philippines are listed among the billionaires of the world. So that was the category of uh, uh, Job during that time. And uh, imagine how he, rich he was, you know, many, uh, many more than uh, more than 2,000 or 3,000 years ago, his possessions, it's given here 7,000 sheep. Imagine that. And 3,000 camels. 
So 3,000 camels would be equivalent maybe to 3,000 cars today. One camel, one car. Grab it, no? And then uh, 500 yoke of oxen. Yan ang nagapanganak. So nagadagan, yung nagadagan, pagitan niya mga baka. 500 female donkeys. So nagadagan, pagitan niya nagadagan ang mga donkey. So the donkey, uh, maybe uh, today would be equivalent to pick up. Pilakabok ang mga pick up ni Job. And then, uh, a very large household. So it so happened that uh, he had seven sons with three daughters. And because they were sons of billionaire of a billionaire, uh, four or five thousand years ago, they were always having parties. They were very rich, inviting their friends to enjoy with them. And uh, Job... Uh, would send and sanctify them because he was a believer in God. He was always particular with his children being cleansed by the blood of their sins and that they must always live holy lives though they are young and uh, always uh, uh, love to have parties but they want them to, he wanted them to love God and worship him. So every morning he would rise up early to offer burnt offering according to the number of his children so that the Lord will cleanse their sins with the blood. And Job said, It might be that some of my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. So thus Job did regularly. And so you, I don't know if you are familiar with the rest of the story, but according to the next verse there in chapter 6, God went up to the throne of God. And God said, all, so how are you? Have you found anything in the world? All the people, you know, they fear God. And God himself said, have you considered my servant Job? How faithful he is? And so I have blessed him. He has become a billionaire. And he is very faithful in the Lord. So Satan, according to the story, despised what the Lord said. He just told, well, you, you bless him. That's why he's faithful. And so the Lord said, so what do you think? Satan said, well, you take away his billions and the joy of his life his children and I tell you Job will curse you so uh, that was now the setting a terrible terrible story that I don't know how many times it is repeated again and again throughout history there in the halls of the palace of God in heaven how many times Satan would go there and accuse Christians, pastors, churches, and uh, you and me? I don't really know how many times Satan, there are billions of believers throughout history, and I believe billions of times Satan through history has gone up to heaven before the throne of God to accuse you and me and any Christian in the past, in the present, and in the future. And so the Lord said, okay, you're free to do that. You do that to them. So in one day, you read the story, I will not explain them to you, but uh, all these things, you know, in one day, 7,000 sheep gone, 3,000 camels gone. 500 yoke of oxen, gone. 500 female donkeys, gone. And large household uh, somewhere involved in the, in the killings of this uh, riches of Job. Well, did that really happen in one day? I don't know if you know what good no one day. But siguro within the week, no? Sunod, sunod. Ang, kwan, 
ang mga calamity ni Job. Ang samot pag yun, because their children were having a party in the eldest brother's house. I just remember the word house. Because you know, during those times, yeah, three to 5,000 years ago, there were no houses, only tents. So how come that uh, uh, Job's, had, Job's family had houses? Well, I think during the time about four, three to 5,000 years ago, only the rich people, I mean kings and nobles, could afford to have a house. The rest, they had tents during those times many, many years ago. So that means Job was very rich because his children live in a house. So during the time when you build a house, it's just building, like building a palace today. Pila bilang bilis ang isang palace today if you build one, isang mansion. So only billionaires could afford that thousands of years ago. But anyway, very sad story because you know, one day, according to the story, so maybe several days, not really one day, not literal, but within the, the day, the days of the great trial. So they are all gone. So let, let there be here in my outline. I or a very rich person, calamity could come to you even today. So be careful not to put our hearts on our possessions and our riches because they can be gone any time. So this period of calamity since last year, daghan ng mga milyonaryo na wala ila mga milyon, di ba? Many businessmen have become poor because of the calamity. Many, many big businesses were kanyat lang. Many big business lost money. I think the only one big business I know here that have gained a lot of money, I think, is Ceres Transportation. Taga Bacolod, Taga Negros. Yanson family from Baladulid. Sila pura nag dato kayo, kaya ang Cebu, napuno sa Ceres, north to south, Cebu City, Lapu-Lapu City. So, Mandawi City, puro ito ng series. Wala na ang mga jeep, pila na lang kabok, even ang mga taxi. So, nagdato, nagyadi noon si Yanson. Pero dili na siya, patay na siya. Ang iyong mga anak, nagdato, nakaayo. So, anyway, that was a, a very th tragic thing. In one day, nawala na tanan. All of Job's possession and children were gone. So in letter C, I wrote here, uh, he did not blame God. That's a very amazing. Job did not blame God. Job chapter 1, verse 21. I read here. Verse 20, Then Job arose, tore his groves, and shaved his head and fell to the ground and worship. Wow. Grabe, no? Nawala ng tanan mga mga anak, ang imutanan ng mga billions. Pero ang sanggihin mo niya, give show yung iyong sorrow, of course. He shaved his head, nagpa-alot siya. So, kalbo na siya. And uh, tore his robe, nga mahal kayo. And then, fell upon the ground what was the reaction? Worship God. Can you do that? Can I do that? I said, Lord, I doubt if makasimba ako ni Moana. So he said famous words. Remember, naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can anyone say that? 
but Job said it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. So blessed be the name of the Lord. Now we jump to chapter 19 of Job. The continuation of some of these beautiful uh, words of Job. Chapter 19, verse 25. Part of the sorrows he uh, experienced. He, 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 his, he uh, said these words. Job 19, 25. I know that my Redeemer lives and he shall stand at last on the earth. Imagine that. For all his riches that has gone, he said, the Lord will redeem me. He's my Redeemer. More than that, he's the Redeemer of my soul. And he shall stand at the last on the earth. And then continue, verse 26. And after my skin is destroyed, this I know, that in my flesh I shall see God. You know, during this time, uh, Naghubo si Job, no? And then, gitubuan sa tanan nga katulang niya nga body. And then, ang tanan nga dust, ang gibutang niya sa body. And so, he said, after my skin is destroyed. So, nagkuan man, nagkuan grabe man ang allergy sa iyang skin. As a result of his great sorrow. And that, in my flesh someday I will see God. This is hope, he said. Someday I will live again in a better skin and better health, better body. And then verse 27, Whom shall I see for myself? And my eyes shall behold and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Verse 27, he said, He said here, My eyes shall behold God someday. And he longs to behold God someday. So here is a very, very important uh, challenge and lesson for me and to all of us. When uh, we have great trials like Job, and when then we lose all our children, our loved ones, all dead, we are the only one left. God, could we pray like Job? The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So maybe not one of that of us has experienced that yet. So don't worry about the pains and the troubles of your life. Wala ka pa kaabot sa mga trial ni Job? Wala pa. So you have, we have no rest, reason to complain. Magreklamo kita sa ginoo. Lord, sobra-sobra man ang kasakit niya ngayatag mo sa ako. No? So, remember what Job said. I came to the world naked and I will go out of the world naked. But blessed be the name of the Lord. Because everything I have belongs to the Lord. So here is a very, very great, important prayer. Can we pray like that? When times of great trouble and sorrow come to our lives, can we still pray? In fact, in one of the verses here, the, Job, the wife of Job said, well, the only thing you can do is curse God and die. Numero isa ka tao na ingon ba nga? Para makapatas ka lang gamay. Pakawala Paka ang utun mong ginoo. Para makabawos ka gamay. Pwede ka makabawos sa ginoo. For all the pain and the sadness and the terrible experiences you have, no. We have no reason to take revenge upon God. Because everything that God does is for our good. So, just like Job, we continue to pray. So Job... He said, blessed is the name of the Lord. The Lord gave and the Lord, uh, uh, the Lord took away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what did he do? He, 
nagyukbo siya sa gino and then praised him and thank him so what a man what a great faith so when great trials come to our lives even this pandemic today wala pa ta nakaabot sa katunga sa trial ni Job di ba wala pa so let us be ashamed of our sins and our pride before the Lord and humble before him and thank him because he is really good but there is still another one here second the prayer of Paul for Christians in Rome so Job continued to pray and we know the story at the end of the life of Job the, the, the Lord restored all his millions his billions his uh, uh, herds was restored to him and he had again had uh, seven sons very very handsome and wonderful sons and again he had three w- wonderful and the most beautiful daughters he had. A- any man could have very very beautiful daughters that the Lord had given to Job because he never stopped believing the Lord and you know what are the th- names of his uh, children? Some of our, of our Christian daughters have this name. Jemima. Oh, anak di ni Job to? Si Jemima. And then Kesia. Kesia. And then Karen Hapok. Ang Karen Hapok, dumudog di kayo lami nga pa man pinawon, no? Kinsa sa inyo nakadungog kami babae ay ang alan si Karen Hapok. Pwede nga Karen, but not hapok. <laughs> nga nga naghapok na siya. But in a way, they were The enemy does not want me to keep on preaching about this important message. Uh, so the prayer of Paul for Christian. It was written by Paul during the third missionary journey from Corinth. So Corinth to Rome, if you draw a straight line, it's about 1,050 kilometers away. So Paul was far away from Corinth, but he wrote a letter to the brethren in Rome. By the way, see Apostle Paul, was never recorded in the Bible to have gone to Rome. Ulagi siya kaabot sa Rome. That's why nobody could uh, claim that Paul was the first Pope. Because Paul was never in Rome. Hindi siya pwede makapapa dito kaya wala siya kaabot sa Rome. So anyway, in this period, 56 AD, during the end of his missionary journey, he wrote this important letter to people of Rome. And many of these people he did not meet personally, but he mentioned them here. Their names are there written here in Romans chapter 16. So it's very important for us to pray for brethren especially for men because uh, right now our thoughts are on the uh, the men 
next Sunday will be celebration of uh, men to be honored in our church. So who are the men here that are mentioned in verse 5? He was mentioning Epinetos, another man. And then in verse 7, Andronikos. Now, in my bypass, ko ang mga ngalan sa mga babae, ha? I was only mentioning here, I'm only mentioning here the men because I am talking about the prayer of Paul for Christian men because I am referring my message to uh, Men's Sunday. Another man here, Epinitus, and then Andronikos. And then Urbanos, verse 9. Grabe yung mga ala, no? Urbanos. And then uh, Stachis, verse 9. And then Apiles, verse 10. Approved of Christ. Grabe di ay ni si Apiles, nga lalaki. Ingun ni Paul, dapat ang puan tagid ni siya. Because he's a man. Approved ang iyang kinabuhi sa atubangan at bangsang ginoo. And then another verse here. In verse 10, another man, Herodion, relative of Herod, imagine, noble family, mga pariente ni King Herod, mga sikat ni sila. Aningon din ni Paul, pariente sa nako. So kung pariente siya ni Herod, pariente sa siya ni Paul, unsa ka ha? Pariente ka ha, ni Paul si King Herod. <laughs> Si King Herod niya, dautan kayo nga, hari, no? I don't really know what what relationship Paul had. Maybe sa pikas nga side siya. Either sa father's side ng isa, isa sa mother's side. So sa pikas nga side si Paul, hindi siya connected niya sa actual nga si Herod nga dautan. And then, Narcissus. It's a beautiful name. Di ba Narcissus? Ngalan sang flower, have you recognized? Narcissus, nga nga buwak. Very nice nga buwak. So, ingon ni Paul, all these brethren of mine, I pray for you, and I greet you, and I pray for you. So, this is in connection with our topic right now, praying for each other. And imagine Paul mentioning every name in a place where he had never been. And then, Praying for people who maybe he did not meet, but praying for them and committing them to the Lord Narcissus. Trifena, verse 12. Rufus, verse 13. Asyncritus. 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 Phlegon and Hermas and Patrobas, verse 14. And then Philologos verse 15, and Nereus and Olympus, all these people. Paul had been praying for them, though he had never been in Rome. But they were members of Rome, and Paul had known many of them only through letters, not personally, but Paul prayed for them. What is the lesson here? Only a lesson, no? Uh, when fathers pray. So all this I'm... Wala ko ma-mention din yung mga mga babae pa na din eh. Daghan, no? Si Anna, si Bernice, eh, daghan pa. I only mentioning here mga lalaki because we are studying here this week and next week about what happens to, to the work of the Lord and to families of Christians when men pray. What happens is God blesses despite the difficult situation like pandemic in our time and during the Paul's time persecution against Christians in Rome in fact many Christians were uh, were martyred in Rome and uh, many of them were uh, nailed to the cross and burned alive in Rome and so Paul praying and remembering Christians in Rome. During the time, it seems Rome was the seat of Satan it's himself. It was the place 
that killed so many Christians in 56 AD. And so today, our, the challenge is for our men to be prayerful. So to our men here, how prayerful are you? If God is listening to the prayers of the women, how much more will God hear the prayers of the men? Because men are leaders. So that means, mas dako ang kabugaton sa pag-ampo sa mga leaders sa atbang sa gino. If leaders will pray. But sometimes, the sorry state is that many leaders do not pray. The only director was, okay, please pray for this and this and this and this. But they themselves do not pray. So men, let us be prayerful. Let us be surrendered to the Lord. Let us serve Him and obey Him. And remember, when fathers and men pray, great things are happening. Even today, if great things have happened in the world history, when men prayed and fathers prayed, how much more today, when men will pray and fathers will pray, greater things will happen during this time of pandemic to the glory of God for the growth of the church, for the blessing of Christians, and for the salvation of people who do not know the Lord. So men and fathers, remember, praying with fervent zeal, because leadership starts with the men. So when men pray, as they are leaders, and they are faithful in praying, God will answer, and greater things will happen to the world, to the church, and to the people of God. So men, pray. Shall we pray? Thank you, Lord, for this important prayer and challenge from the life of Job. And uh, Paul, who prayed for the men and put their names here in the Bible in Romans chapter 16, praying for them so that they will be used to the Lord. And they were used to the Lord during that time in Rome. And until now, may our men pray so that greater things will happen during this pandemic. And at the end of this, more souls and more churches will grow until Jesus Christ comes. In Jesus' name, amen.